A lot's changed since the 1960s. Everyone's connected. Computers run everything, like our banks and financial markets, processing billions of transactions a day. But some things haven't changed. When Bob wants to make a transaction with Alice, they each need people to record the transaction, then validate it, then check what the other side recorded. Over and over, each time something changes. That's a lot of people and a lot of work, all just to make sure that in the end, what Bob sees is what Alice sees. What if there was a simpler way for everybody? Well, now there is. Distributed Ledger Technology, DLT. DLT is about sharing the data to keep people like Bob and Alice in sync but it's also about making sure no one can change that data for their own agenda. There's a lot of DLT products out there looking to share data on blockchains, which are neat, but problematic. On a blockchain, everybody gets a copy of every transaction. That's a lot of duplicate data, and it's hard to scale to meet the world's needs. There's also privacy to think about. Sure, you can encrypt the data, but usually the only people who should have a copy of a deal between Bob and Alice are Bob and Alice. Now meet Corda, DLT, with a difference. When you make a deal on Corda, your data isn't put into a block with everybody else's. Each deal is individual. On Corda, you can tailor smart contracts for trading anything you can think of and send data only to those that need to know. Sometimes that's just Bob and Alice. Sometimes you might want to plug in a service just to check the deal's okay. Sometimes a regulator will need to be kept in the Okay, hello and welcome to the demonstration of Corda Settler, the open source Corda app built to help Corda users settle transactions on any rail. Transactions usually refer to an exchange of one asset for another. One leg of the transaction creates an obligation to complete the other leg. Corda Settler allows users to complete that second leg on any system, whether that's a non-blockchain rail, a cryptocurrency system, or on Corda directly. If the second leg is not on Corda, it just needs to provide two integration points, one for users to initiate payments and another to confirm payment status. The following animation will show a network of participants using Corda Settler. Company A and Company B are the counterparties. They are using a notary service on Corda, and they both have access to nodes in other payment systems. For this demo, XRP is the chosen payment rail. This animation will be available as a click-through on r3.com. From a transaction on Corda, Company B has an obligation to pay Company A $100. As the beneficiary, Company A can choose the currency in which they'd like to be paid. In this case, Company A chooses XRP. To update the obligation, company A will get the current exchange. The fintech companies, that the new entrepreneurial companies, have a new set of rails on which to hook into um, to, to provide services to consumers. Mm. Um, right now, fintechs, I, I think, struggle um, with, with holding money because they have to use banks, which use old rails. Mm. Here we're talking about a new set of rails, um, which, if done right, fintechs can, can use as opposed to using the banking uh, correspondent network. This document has been removed, but it mentions the Central Bank of Singapore and Singapore's stock market using blockchain technology. Interledger is mentioned 13 times. It's important to note that they never say Interledger protocol or mention Ripple at all. In this February 2018 report by Krungsri, Ripple and the Monetary Authority of Singapore are currently running trials using blockchain technology to make international payments. At the Blockchain for Finance conference, I moderated a panel discussing international payments on blockchains, specifically the Jasper Ubin project with the Monetary Authority of Singapore and the Bank of Canada as stakeholders. The 44-page paper was released last week. Here's a quick summary. The focus of the Jasper Ubin project was to explore models for cross-currency, cross-border, cross-blockchain payments in central bank-issued tokenized money. The goal was to prove that this could be done atomically using a cryptographic trick called hash and time-locked contracts, HTLC, which ensures that either all the value moves all the way to the intended recipient, including FX, or nothing moves and all the money is returned to the sender as if it never left. The setup was Singapore dollars issued by MAS on a Singaporean quorum network and a Canadian dollars issued by Bank of Canada on a Canadian quarter network. This phase focused on three conceptual designs based on earlier work. Design one was with an intermediary who has access to both networks and who does the FX and transfers. For example, HSBC Singapore having access to Singapore dollars in Singapore on quorum and HSBC Canada having access to Canadian dollars in Canada on quarter. This is the most traditional setup. 
Design 2 explored foreign banks holding central bank tokens directly. For example, HSBC Singapore can hold Canadian dollars on quarter, and this would mean that the central banks would allow foreign banks to hold their digital currency. And Design 3 explored money to be recreated as depository receipts on other networks. For example, HSBC Singapore could hold Canadian dollars, traditionally a quarter asset, on quorum in Singapore. The central banks would act as the agents who issued these depository receipts onto their own networks. The first design with intermediaries was implemented successfully in this phase. So what does this mean? This shows that blockchains can be used to move assets across a number of steps and parties in an all-at-once or not-at-all way. It also shows that tokens, including money, can jump across different blockchain networks using cryptographic tricks. And finally, it demonstrates that the enterprise blockchain industry continues to make progress. To learn more about... 18 article, it states that the Bank of Canada has partnered with the Bank of England and the Monetary Authority of Singapore on developing a faster and cost-effective cross-border payment settlement system. This is a list of R3 projects. HKMA is Hong Kong Monetary Authority. Notice the Confidential Central Bank Digital Currency Project. R3 is working on the digitization of the global economy. It's clear from this PDF that digital assets have a role. The Hong Kong Monetary Authority and the Central Bank of Singapore are working on a DLT project for trade finance cross-border infrastructure. HKMA and Moz will create significant synergy for the development of fintech. This 2017 PDF of Deloitte showing blockchain technology. This Deloitte PDF also mentions its partnership with Ripple. Deloitte worked with 30 plus proof of concepts built for 20 plus clients including European banks, the Central Bank in China, Canadian Bank, British Bank, global oil and gas companies, large insurance providers, as well as blockchain pilots with the U.S. government agencies. Is this slide starting to make sense? Ashish Birla mentioning that they announced the results of our collaboration with two of the world's leading central banks, the Federal Reserve and the Bank of England. This R3 document is mentioning the Swiss Stock Exchange 6 trading stocks and bonds and Singapore Stock Exchange, both using R3 to test tokenized asset settlement on the Corda platform, and the trial was conducted in partnership with the U.S. stock market NASDAQ and Deloitte. The R3 document mentions that they're able to complete this system without a big bang, without shaking the system. The regulators and central bank governors who said, well, yes, this is good and this is helpful and it is changing the business model of commercial banks. But we have to be mindful of two things, trust and stability of the system. And we are equally concerned, we at the IMF, about stability. We don't want innovation that would shake the system so much that we would lose the stability that is conversations with various representatives of china i believe that that will all work out very well for everybody china japan the united states and everybody in the region uh, as far as uh, the currency devaluations i've been complaining about that for a long time and I believe that we will all eventually, and probably very much sooner than a lot of people understand or think, we will be all at a level playing field. Because that's the only way it's fair. That's the only way that you can fairly compete in trade and other things. And we will be on. The Bank of England is a paid customer of Ripple's. There's another central bank we haven't announced that we're working with very actively. Take a hike, boss. I'm running things now. All hail King Homer. I have included my Patreon link and my TipBot account in the description of this video.